all you beautiful people, it's Ashley here and today's topic is all about... Today's subject is all about love, the sweetest and warmest feeling known to mankind. Needless to say, I love love, I write one too many romantic fanfictions, I received a Tumblr ask to do a video on love or relationship, so here we go. Now this video is going to be broken down into two parts. First, we're going to talk about love styles, and then we're going to talk about the triangular theory of love. So let's start with love styles. Now they are modes of operation of how people love. It was originally developed by John Allen Lee. He identified six basic love styles or colors of love. And these are what people use in their interpersonal relationships. Real quick, interpersonal, that is of or relating to relationships or communication between people. Love style number one, Eros. Now this is a passionate, physical, and emotional love of wanting to satisfy, create sexual contentment, security, and aesthetic enjoyment for each other. This also includes creating sexual security for the other by striving to forsake options of sharing one's intimate and sexual self with outsiders. The next one is Laudis. Now this style is used by those who see love as a desiring to want to have fun with each other. To do outdoor and indoor activities, uh, teasing indulge, and playing harmless pranks on each other. The acquisition of love and attention itself may be part of the game. Uh, this style is used by those who see love as a game and want to win as many partners as possible. The focus is on having fun in the moment and therefore relationships of this sort tend to be very short. The third one is storage. This style of love grows slowly out of friendship and is based more on similar interests and a commitment to one another rather than on passion. Number four is pragma. Now, this love style is based on the perceptions of practicality and realism. People who prefer this style approach their relationship in a business-like fashion and look for partners with whom they can share common goals. The next one is mania. This love style usually flows out of low self-esteem and a need to be loved by one's partner. Lovers of this sort usually become very possessive and jealous. Ugh. And the last one is agape. In this style of love, the person is willing to sacrifice anything for their partner. It is based on an unbreakable commitment and an unconditional selfless love. Alright, that was love styles. Now we're gonna go on to the next part of the video, which is called the triangular theory of love. This theory was developed by psychologist Robert Sternberg. Love has three components, intimacy, passion, and commitment. Intimacy encompasses the feelings of attachment, closeness, connectedness, and bondedness. Is that such a word? Oh yeah, there is. Passion encompasses drives connected to both limerence and sexual attraction. And commitment, which encompasses, in short term, the decision to remain with one another and in the long term, plans made with the other. So, based on these three components of love, you can actually have seven different varieties of love. Well, there's actually eight, but the first one is not included. The first one is non-love. It consists of none of the components. Non-love categorizes the large majority of our personal relationships, which are simply casual interactions. The second one is liking or friendship. This consists of the intimacy component of love. It refers to the set of feelings one experiences in a relationship that can truly be categorized as friendship. One feels closeness, bondness, and warmth towards the other, 
without the feelings of intense passion or long-term commitment. Infatuated love consists of the passion component. Romantic relationships often start out as infatuated love and become romantic love as intimacy develops over time. But without developing intimacy or commitment, infatuated love may disappear suddenly. Romantic love? What do I mean by romantic love? Well, romantic love consists of passion and intimacy. Romantic lovers are not only drawn physically to each other, but they're also bonded emotionally. But it's without sustaining commitment. The next one is empty love. Now this one is categorized by commitment only, and there is no intimacy or passion. But for example, in an arranged marriage, the spouse's relationship may begin as empty love and develop into another form indicating how empty love need not be the terminal state of a long-term relationship. Companionate love. Now this is an intimate, non-passionate type of love that is stronger than friendship because of the element of long-term commitment. This type of love is observed in long-term marriages where passion is no longer present, but where a deep affection and commitment remain. This love, ideally shared between family members, is a form of compassionate love, as is the love between close friends who have a platonic but strong friendship. The next one is factuous love. This is passion and commitment. Factuous love in the sense that a commitment is made on the basis of passion without the stabilizing influence of intimate involvement. And the very last form of love is consummate love. Now this has all three, all three components of love. Intimacy, passion, and commitment. It is the complete form of love representing an ideal relationship which people strive towards. Of these seven varieties of love, consummate love is theorized to be the love that is associated with the perfect couple. And there you have it, the triangular theory of love. And there you have it, love. Who said it wasn't complicated? Now, obviously love is a very very wide topic. In this case I only talked about interpersonal love. So I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. Well that is my time. Thank you so much for watching this video. The link to all of my sources are in the description box below.